Have you ever wanted to have your own custom credit scroll, but the options available in Stream Elements and Stream Labs weren't quite to your liking, or you couldn't get quite the customization that you needed? Well, that's what we're building today. We are going to be working on a custom credit scroll that you can put in absolutely any information that you want, and we are going to be adding in information that is beyond what you can get with Stream Labs and Stream Elements which should give you an idea of how you can do things even more custom for your own setup. So if you've been following along on this playlist from the beginning, you'll need to start things out in your bot. If you've not been following along since the beginning, I'll leave a link in the description down below for the Build a Twitch Bot from Scratch series that I've been working on for the past few months now, which should get you up to speed pretty handily. But in any case, we're going to need to do three things here. We're going to need to work on some things within our bot itself. Then we're going to need to build some CSS that's going to tie to a HTML file that we've set up. And then we're also going to need to build out the front end JavaScript. And all of those are in separate files, which I will detail individually. So within the bot, the first thing that we're going to need to do is to take advantage of the information that we've gathered so far from all of the metrics that we've been tracking. So all of the different subs and follows and cheers and resubs and all of that stuff. So, which is in fact part of the event subsystem that took us quite a while to set up. So the first thing that we're going to need is a variable that can keep track of all of the individual alerts and events that come in and hold them for later so that whenever we actually need our credit scroll, we have a source of data to pull from. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a global variable constant. We're going to call that credits data. And this is going to be equal to a JSON object that is going to have several attributes. So we're going to be fo tracking follows, and this is just going to be an empty array. We are also going to track subs, which is also going to be an empty array, again with resubs. And we are also going to be tracking gift subs. So in this case though, what we're going to need to do is, because this is not just a straight, like someone subscribed for so many months, or someone is a new subscriber or someone followed, this can actually change dynamically. So for example, we can have someone that gifts a sub and then later in the stream gifts say five more subs. So what we need to do is we need to track how many subs an individual person gifts. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this as a JSON object, an empty JSON object that the keys and values are going to be determined each time someone does a thing. So for example, if someone was to gift a sub, what it's going to do is it's going to say, is this person currently within the gift subs JSON object? And if they're not, it's going to create a attribute for them. And the key is going to be their Twitch name. And the value is going to be the number of subs that they've gifted. So then if they gift more subs within the same stream, what it's going to do is it's going to find their name exists in the gift subs JSON object. And then it's going to add in the number of subs that they've gifted since then. So in, let's say they gift one sub and then later they gift three. It's going to add that together to give you four. And so with the same thing, we're going to be doing the same thing with cheers. So we're going to be using the exact same system with a JSON object with that. So then we're also going to be tracking raids that come in, and that is going to be an empty array. And we're also going to be tracking stream milestones that also happen within the stream. So uh, if you have been keeping up with the previous videos, you will remember that we have set up milestone alerts. So if we hit say 1300 followers, which you can see that we are tracking currently, 
we will hit a milestone. Or if we hit, say, 20 subs, we will hit a milestone. And so we want to show these milestones within our credits, which is something that Streamlabs and Stream Elements does not do. So this is just an example of having something that's more custom and set up directly for our needs. So now that we have all of this set up, you know, this variable set up to hold the individual events, what we need to do is we need to assign when these events happen. So first, we're going to go to our access token response within our initial, you know, grab for our access token to Twitch. And we're going to see if we have hit our follow goal. So right here, we're going to say, okay, if we have hit our follow goal, what we want to do is we want to add in this data to the credits data. So we want to say credits data dot milestones dot push since this is an array. And within this array, we want to push what we just did. So we want to say the Twitch metrics. So we're grabbing from the Twitch metrics file since what this is grabbing is from the initial load of the stream or the bot. So it's checking to make sure if we have surpassed the follow goal since the last time that we've streamed. So we're going to grab it from the Twitch metrics file that we set up in one of the previous videos. And we're going to push that number plus follows followers like so. And then we will come down to the sub goal section of our initial bot load. And then we will do the same thing. So right here, we'll just bring this down. And just like before, we will say our credits data dot milestones, and then we will push in the sub points data. So we'll say just like so. And once we have this for the initial bot load, we also need to check it again for if this happens at any point during the stream. So if you'll recall, we have a interval running every 10 minutes to check to see if any of our metrics have changed. So our follow goals, our sub goals or anything like that. So in the same way, what we're going to do is we are going to say our credits data dot milestones, and then we're going to push onto it instead of the Twitch metrics file data, we're just going to pull in the current follow goal, the one that's currently being tracked within the bot as the stream is live. So this is whenever we have a milestone, of a follower milestone that is passed live during the stream. And in the same way, we will do the same thing for if we surpass a sub goal, like so. And then just like before, we are pulling in the current sub goal from the active set of data and instead of the saved file that we were pulling in before to get the bot launched. And that's all we have to worry about for running the milestone credits data. And now what we want to do is we want to set up everything else. So our follows, our subs, our cheers, raids, and so on. And what we're going to need to do is we are going to need a new function for this, just to make things easier. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a arrow function. So we're going to do so we're going to say constant to const, and we're going to call this push twitch credit entry. This is going to be equal to a single parameter function. We're going to say this is webhook event. And if you have been following along from previous videos, this should give you an indication of where we're going with this, which is going to lead in to an arrow function. And within this function, we are going to do something very similar to what we did on our overlay whenever we set up our custom alerts and also our custom channel point alerts. So if you recall, we had to check and see what event was being pulled in. So whether it be a follow, a sub, a resub, a gift sub, a cheer, or a raid. 
And then we had to do something with those individual events. So we're going to be doing something nearly identical to this within the bot. However, what we're doing with each particular event is going to change since we are working on the back end here instead of the front end with the overlay. So just like before, within the overlay, we need to set up a constant, or sorry, and a, a variable, and call it event username. This is going to be equal to a ternary if statement. So we're going to say the webhook event dot event. And if you recall, this is the same format that we were using in order to use the Twitch event sub event. So this is still working off of Twitch event subs. So we're going to say if the username exists, we want this variable to be assigned to the webhook event dot event dot username like this. Otherwise, we want it to be an empty string in single quotes. And just like within the overlay portion of this, what we're going to do is we are going to have a large if else conditional that checks to see what type of event we have received and how to handle each event once we get it. So what we're going to do is we are going to say if the webhook event dot subscription dot type equals a string of channel dot follow, then that means we have received a follower alert. And if that happens, what we're going to do is we are going to push to the credits data variable and then the dot follows attribute. We're going to push to that the event username like so. And it's just that simple. And in a very similar fashion, we are going to do the same thing for new subscribers as well as resubs. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. So if we instead have a subscribe event. What we're going to do is we're going to take the credits data variable. We're going to push to the subs attribute, the event username, just as before, and then add to that the string of the tier of sub that they have subscribed with. So we're going to add in a space right here and then say tier. And then we're going to say the tier of the sub. So what happens here is the sub tier from Twitch comes in as a string and that string is usually 1000, 2000 or 3000 to indicate the tier of subs. So 1000 is a tier one, 2000 is tier two, 3000 is tier three. So what we're doing is we are putting this as a integer and then dividing it by 1000 to get one, two or three to say that this person has subscribed at whatever tier they subscribed at. And then in the same way, if we have a resub, what we're doing is we're saying that the event username has resubscribed for this many months for the webhook event cumulative months at tier, and again, parsing out the integer and then dividing it by a thousand to get the tier. So those are very similar to follower alert. For give subs and cheers, things get a little more hairy. So what we're going to do for a give sub is we're going to say else if the webhook event dot event, sorry, dot subscription dot type equals a string of channel dot subscription dot gift. What we're going to do is here, if we have received any gift subs, what we're going to do is we are first going to pull in the name of the person that gifted the sub. And because this is potentially an anonymous person, because you can give subs anonymously, what we're going to do is we're going to make a constant and we're going to call it gifter. And this constant is going to be equal to a ternary if statement. And this ternary if statement is going to be the webhook event dot event dot is underscore anonymous, like so. And we want to know if this is going to be equal to true. And if this is true, we want to have this as a string of anonymous. And if it's not, 
we want this to be the event username, like so. And now that we have the gifter's name, we can actually insert the gift information into the JSON object. However, it's not just a simple push as before. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out if the person that just gifted the sub exists within the gift subs JSON object. So what we're going to do is we're going to say credits data dot gift subs at the index or key of the gifter name, which I need to rename this to gifter name. So we're checking to see if that person exists within the gift subs JSON object. And if they do, what we're going to do is we are going to say the credits data dot gift subs attribute at the gifter names key is equal to that same value. So the credits data dot gift subs at the gifter name plus the webhook event dot event dot total in order to get the number of gift subs that they gave. However, if this is the first time that this person has gifted a sub within the stream, they currently do not exist within that gift subs JSON object. So what we'll need to do in this case instead is we need to assign that variable or, or that key initially. So what we're going to do is we're going to say credit to data that gift subs at the gifter name is just equal to the webhook event dot event dot total like so. And that's how we do that for a gift sub. It is nearly an identical process for the cheers. So I will just copy and paste that in for cheering. So what we'll be doing for cheering is we will be saying else if the webhook subscription type is channel.cheer, then what we'll do is we'll get the cheerer name instead, which is in the same way as before, checking to see if it's anonymous. And then if it is anonymous, we just assign the gifter's name to, or the cheerer's name to anonymous. Otherwise, we put the name that is there. And then we check to see if the person that gave the cheer exists within the cheers attribute, the JSON object of the cheers attribute. And if they do, we will add the current value of how much they've cheered to how much they've just cheered in the last event. So in this case, instead of total, we're getting the, we're adding in the webhook event, dot event, dot bits. And if they do not exist within the cheers JSON object, then we just assign that new key and give it the value of the amount of bits that they have given. And for the raid events, that is very similar to what we were doing with the follows and subs and resubs, we're just simply pushing to an array like so. So what we're doing is we're saying that if the subscription type is a channel raid instead, we're going to push to the raids attribute array, the person that gave the raid, as well as how many viewers they raided in with like so. And then once this is all said and done, what we want to do is we want to emit a socket event to the pay, to the credits page that we are going to be creating in a bit. So we're going to say io.sockets.emit. What we want to do is we want to have the event name be get credits like this. And we're passing in the data of the credits data variable that we've been updating this whole time. And so what this is going to do for us is if we are already on the credits page whenever a new event happens. Now this will update the credits screen for us. It'll just delete all the credits that we have so far and then recreate the whole page so that we have new and updated credits as soon as they happen. And this is something that I've noticed that doesn't occur within Streamlabs and stream elements. So here again, this is something that we are getting that's beyond that. And that's all that we're going to need for this function. 
So what we're going to need to do next is we're going to need to set up the socket listener within the bot to know what to do whenever the credits page that we are going to be creating in a bit requests the credits information. So within our bot socket listeners, what we're going to do is we're going to create another socket listener. So we're going to say socket.on and we're going to have the event being listened for be a string of get credits. And this second argument is going to be a function, as always, which is simply going to emit a socket event. So we're going to say socket.emit the credits data or the get credits event that we just set up earlier, followed by the credits data itself. So that as soon as the credits page loads and then requests the credits data, the bot will be able to return that as soon as it's requested of it. And then the last thing that we're going to need to do is set up a HTTP route for the page itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to set up a new overlay.app, overlay app dot get request or get route. And the route that we're looking for here is slash Twitch credits like this, followed by a function with the parameters of request and response that we've done many times already. And this will simply return a response of send file. And the file that we are returning is the directory name plus a string of slash HTML. And you can see on the left side that I have already set up a page for the Twitch credits.html as well as Twitch credits.javascript or JS and also a CSS file for that on the left. So it's HTML slash Twitch credits.html just like this. And if you are wondering how the HTML is structured within the Twitch credits.html file, it looks just like this. It's just a simple set up to where we just have a body tag that has a div with an ID of wrapper and then another div within that that is the credits container and then we just fill in all of the information for the credits themselves dynamically on the front end so now that we have that what we need to do is we need to go into the twitch webhooks slash callback route that we set up whenever we did the event subsystem and we need to trigger our push Twitch credits entry function that we set up earlier so that whenever we actually get a new event that is pushed to the credits data variable before it's pushed out to the overlay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say right before our io.sockets.emit and we're emitting a Twitch webhook event, we're pushing that data as a credits entry first so that it is stored within the bot and then it's pushed out to the overlay so that we can then get our alerts for whatever it is that we're doing so then now that we're done with all of the bot section of this we're going to do something very similar to what we did in the last video and we are going to set up our css for all of this first so that we can get more autocomplete stuff in our front end JavaScript file. So it just makes life a little easier for us. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first set some information or some attributes for both the HTML file as a whole, as well as the body tag. So we need some just global stuff to be styled first. So we want the background here to be transparent. And then we also, for our use case, we want the text to be aligned to the right. And we also, and this might seem odd, but I'll explain what's happening in a minute. We want the height of this to be five times taller than the height of the window that we are working with. So 
in most cases, the window that you're working with in OBS is going to be 1920 by 1080. So we want that to be five times that. So the way you do that is you say 500 VH. So, and this VH means view height or viewer height. And the reason that we want this to be this way is so that whenever the credits start scrolling, we want this to go from bottom to top from negative or positive 100%. So all the way at the bottom to all the way at the top. And if this is just the full height, so in this case, 1080 pixels, it's going to be visible at all times. So we need this to actually scroll off of the screen. So we need this to be, you know, taller than what our window is. And so I'm just choosing to go five times the height. You could probably get away with doing this at two times the height, but just to be safe, I'm doing this at five times. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set up some animations. And so we're setting up a keyframe animation and we're going to call this credits header scroll. So we're going to have some headers that pop in and we're also going to do different things for the entries. So for the headers, this is going to be pretty simple. So we're going to just say at 0%, we want the top of the credit entry because we're doing this as individual entries, not as just a whole page. So that's how this is going to be slightly unique. So most credit scroll tutorials that you're going to find, what they'll do is they'll say, okay, once you have all of your credits put in, they're assuming that you are working with static credits. So you know exactly how many credits you're going to have. We don't know how many credits we're going to have. So we need to do this dynamically. Which means instead of just taking a whole div that contains all of our credits and then moving it from bottom to top, we need to do this per entry. So per header, per entry, and then move each one of those individually from bottom to top so that we can guarantee that each one of these things goes from bottom to top. Because if you don't, what can happen is if you have too many credits, and you don't account for how much is going on, you could stop your credit scroll midway and then it just starts over and you don't see everything. And so it just looks super janky. So we need to do this on an individual level, which is why we're differentiating between headers and entries, because we need to do this individually. So at the start, we're going to say at 0%, we want this to be all the way at the bottom. So the top of the div is going to be all the way at the bottom, so 100%. And then at 100% of the animation, we want the top to be at negative 100%. So in this case, it's going to scroll past the top. And that's all for the header scroll. And then we're going to set up another keyframe animation. And we're going to call this one credit entry scroll. And then I can give myself a little bit of padding here just to make sure that you can still see everything. And for this one, this one's going to be a little different. So what we're going to do is we're going to say at 0%, we want the top of this div to be at 100% just as before. However, we also want to adjust the right position. So what we want for the individual entries, so like the individual people that are within the credits, we want those entries to slide in from the right as they come in from the bottom. So it'll scroll up and then after a second or two, or like a half a second, it'll swipe the names in from the right. So we want to start off with the name itself being off screen to the right. So we want this to be at negative 50%. To the right so it's clearly off screen and then at five percent of the animation what we want is we want the right position to be at 16 pixels so we want this to be offset from the right edge of the screen by 16 pixels so we want to be a bit exact here so it gives us a little bit of you know forced margin and then at 100% of the animation, we will do exactly what we did before. We want the 
top of the entry to be at 100%. And now that we have our animations that we need set up, what we can do is set up the individual classes that we're working with. So the first one that we're going to need is we're going to say dot credit title. So we're going to do this one as a separate thing. So we just have one that's going to be set to credit title. And for this, what we're going to do is we are going to need this to be a position of absolute. We want the right to be offset by 16 pixels. So we want this to be 16 pixels away from the right edge. We want the animation name to be the credits header scroll. We want the animation duration to be 15 seconds. We want the animation timing function to be linear because I tried leaving this as just an ease in and out and it just doesn't look right at all. So we need this to be linear and we want the animation fill mode to be forwards so that the credits stay above the screen once they're out of visible range. So that they don't just like jump back and we see them again. We want the font size to be 96 pixels. And you can adjust this to your liking. And we want the color to be gold. And that's it for the credit title. Now the credit header is going to be nearly identical. Except for a color difference. So within the credit header... We're going to do is we'll just change this to header and then we will change the color to light blue. Everything else stays the same. For the credit entry, that is also nearly identical and I'll just copy and paste it here. For the credit entry, what we have is everything is the same except we have reduced the font size to 56 pixels. We have changed the color to white smoke. And this is just a personal preference of mine. And we are going to have one more class. And we're going to have this one called a credit info. And this class is going to be used specifically for situations where I want to add in normal sized text information that does not slide in from the right. It's just a static bottom to top, similar to the headers. And so in the same way as the credits entry, everything is the same, except for the animation name, we'll be using the header scroll instead of the credit entry scroll, like we're using for the credit entry right here. So the only difference on the credit entry is the animation name, the font size, as well as the color. And then the only difference on the credit info is the animation name versus the credit entry. Now that we're done with our CSS file, we can get rid of all of our padding and head on over to the front end JavaScript file. And within our front end JavaScript file, there's really not that much that's going on. So what we'll do is we will set up our socket variable like we do nearly every time. So we'll just say let socket equal IO dot connect. And then we will grab our DOM element from the HTML file. So we'll say a constant of credits equals document dot get element by ID. And we're grabbing the credits container from the HTML file from earlier. And then we are also going to create an array, but we need this array to be changeable. So we're going to say let credits HTML equal an empty array. And this is what's going to hold each of our individual credit entries. So we're then going to say let current credit index equal zero. And if you have been following along from the previous videos, you're probably aware of what I'm about to do here. So we're going to be using the current credit index to cycle through each individual credit that is going to come through on the credits page. Then we are going to request the credits data from the bot. So we're going to say socket.emit and we're going to send in the event name of get credits followed by an empty string. 
And now what we're going to do is we are going to define what happens once we get the credits information from the bot. So we're going to set up a listener by saying socket.on and the event name is, you guessed it, get credits followed by a function containing the parameter of credits data. And within this function, this is where things are going to get a little more interesting. And within this function, the first thing that we need to do is we need to clear out any current credits that are currently there. So we're going to say credits dot HTML is going to be equal to an empty string. And then we are going to say that the credits HTML array is equal to an array containing our initial entry of a HTML file. We're just going to say a single, single quote string of a div with the class of credits title and the content of thanks for watching like this. And now we are going to set up two constants. And the first constant that we're going to have is called gifters. So all of the people that have gifted within the stream, that is going to be equal to the global object object dot keys. And we're going to take in the credits data dot gift subs. And for those of you not familiar with this, the object object and then keys, what this does is it creates an array of all of the keys within a JSON object. So in this case, it's going to give us an array of every person's name that has gifted subs within this stream. So if you ever have a situation where you're trying to cycle through all of the values within a JSON object, you can use object.keys and then the JSON object in question to get an array of all of your keys. And then we're going to create another constant called cheers, and that's going to be equal to object.keys with the argument of credits data dot cheers like this. And now what we're going to do is we are going to cycle through every one of the attributes within the credits data array. And if there are any entries within each individual attribute, we will then create a section within the credits scroll specifically for that. So we're going to start off with follows. So we're going to say if our credits data dot follows dot length is greater than zero, this means that we have had at least one person that has followed within the stream. What we're going to do is we are going to say credits HTML dot push. Then we are going to set up a div get good scrub that apparently tries telling me to get good and within this div we are going to have a class of credit header and a body of new followers like this and then we are going to have a loop that goes through the entire array of followers that have followed within the stream and then gives them their own entry as a div so for each entry of the follows array, let me give us some padding right here. We will say credits HTML dot push, and we will push on to the array another div. This div will have a class of credit entry, and the content of the div is going to be the credits data dot follows at i. And that's it. And so in a very similar fashion, we are going to do the same thing for subs and resubs. And the structure of this is going to be exactly the same. So I'll just copy and paste it in to save us some time. So just like with follows, with subs, we are creating a credit header and then also creating credits entries for each individual sub that is subbed and also for resubs. And just like before, with putting in the information to the credits data JSON object, creating individual credits for 
sub gifters and cheers is going to be slightly different. So in this case, instead of working with the credits data object, we're going to say if the gifters array length is greater than zero. This means that at least one person has gifted a sub to the stream. Then just like before, we will create a header like this, and we will also create an, a loop. The difference is that we are now iterating over the gifters array instead of the credits data object or the specific attribute within the credits data object. And within this loop, this is where things are going to be slightly different. So we're going to say credits HTML, not push, and we are going to create a div with the class of credit entry, just like before. And the content of this is going to be a little hairier. So we're going to say first, we want the gifter name. So we're going to say plus the gifters at the current index. So the current person that is given a sub plus single quotes, colon and a space. Plus, I want to say the credits data dot gift subs at the gifters array of the current index. So what this is basically doing for us is we're saying, okay, give me the gift subs JSON object, and then give me the number of subs for the person that gifted at the current point in the gifters array. So since the gifters array is all of the object keys within the gift subs JSON object, this is calling a JSON object key to get the value. So I know that might seem a little confusing, but it, you know, it makes sense once you understand how JSON objects work and how using object.keys works in an iteration like this. And so that's how we do this for GIF subs. And just like before, doing cheers is a very similar situation. So I'll copy and paste that in. So for cheers, we're going to say if the cheers array is greater than zero, that means at least one person has cheered within the stream. We create a header. And just like before, with the gift subs, we're going to say that the person that cheered, and then a colon and a space, and then we're getting the cheers JSON object at the current person that is cheering. So it, because that's also a JSON object, we can do the same thing. And for the raids and the milestones, what we're doing is we are using the same exact method as we used before for the follows and subs and resubs, since those are all arrays. So I'm just going to copy and paste those in to save us some time. Early stream. And so for raids, we are going back to calling the credits data dot raids length. So if we have anyone that has raided within the stream, then we will create a header and then just like before, iterate through the raids array and then go through and put in individual entries. And the same thing for milestones. If we hit an individual milestone, we do the same thing. And for the last bit of customization, to our credit scroll, I'm going to do a little bit of copying and pasting. And what I've done here is I want to have something that happens at the end of a credit scroll, regardless of if we have credits that happen or not. I want this to scroll every time that we go through the credits. And so this is why I created the credit info CSS class. And so because you can't have just a huge block of information, you need to do this line by line in order to make sure that everything lines up for the credit scroll in the way that you want it to. So if you want to have any kind of extra information or thanks or anything like that, after your credit scroll, this is what you would need to do. Just for each line, you would push to the credits HTML array, a div with the class of credit info, 
and then the content would be the first line or whatever line that you're on for that extra information. You'll also notice that I set up a loop that runs 10 times and also pushes 10 empty divs to this. And the reason that I do that is so that we have some blank space to work with after the credits have concluded so that it doesn't just like look like one continuous stream because this is going to start over every time that we end a credit scroll so that it's in essentially an infinite loop of credit scrolling. And now that we have everything set up to actually do the credit scroll or to set up the credit scroll and create it within the HTML page, the last thing that we need to do is actually make the credits scroll. So what we're going to do is we are first going to set a timeout that's going to wait for three seconds. And the reason we are doing this is in order to give the credits HTML time to be built. So whenever we actually get to the credits page, the credits are not going to start immediately. They're going to start three seconds after we hit the credits page. And after those three seconds have concluded, we are going to set up an interval that will occur every three quarters of a second. So we're going to set up a function. And then we're going to say 750 milliseconds. Now, this is exact timing that is specific to how I set up the CSS. So if you change the font sizes or the spacing or the the margins or anything like that within your CSS, you're going to need to change your timing here so that your individual credits don't overlap. So this is something that I had to figure out off stream. So just be aware of that if you're changing your pacing for yourself. So if you change anything within the CSS from what I've done, then you're going to need to change this to be something that You'll have to watch your credit scroll again and again to make sure that it is actually working the way that you want it to work. And so within this interval, we are first going to see if we have reached the final credit. So we're going to say if the current credit index is equal to the credits HTML dot length, then we're going to say that we're out of credits. So if we reach the length, of how many credits we've shown, we're going to say that the credits, the current credit index is now back to zero. And now that we've done that, we can create the individual credits and show them. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a constant, not like that. We're going to create a constant. We're going to call it current credit. And that is going to be equal to a document create element. And that element is going to be a div. And then we're going to say current credit dot inner HTML is going to be the HTML that we have within the credit HTML for that element. So we're going to say credits HTML at the current credit index. And then we are going to place that div within the credits page. So we're going to say credits dot append child. That takes in a single argument of the current credit. And then we are going to increment the current credit index by saying current credit index plus plus. And then what you would need to do to get this set up within OBS is you're going to need to create another scene that has a browser source, you know, to the exact dimensions of your window. So in my case, it's going to be 1920 by 1080. And the address that you're going to be using is localhost colon 4001 slash Twitch credits. And I have already set up my credit scroll. And so if everything has happened appropriately, this should work. So I'm going to switch over to my credit scroll and then it's going to say, thanks for watching. And then it's going to give our subs and resubs, which seems as though I 
I may have messed something up. Future Silver here. While you're getting that error that you just saw, I went and dug through my code to see what was causing the issue to not show the names of the people that had subscribed and resubscribed in those credits. And I found that it was a CSS error. I made a silly mistake here in the credits entry scroll animation. So what I was trying to do was have the divs for each individual credit name start at the bottom and go to the top. And what I had unintentionally done was keep them at the bottom the whole time. So on line 25 here, I mistakenly had put the top at 100%, just the same as at line 18 here. So line 18 is when each credit is at the bottom of the screen. So 100% of the top attribute means it's all the way down. Whereas negative 100% means that the, the dish is all the way up. So I had 100% for both of them. So now if we were to go to my credit scene, you would actually see after a few seconds that each line swipes in as it's supposed to. And this is how the credit scroll is supposed to work. So it was only a one line thing that I missed a negative instead of having it as a positive. So that's just some silly mistakes that can happen whenever you do this kind of thing. And it's easy to miss. So that is going to be it for this video. In the next video, we are going to cover how to turn on text to speech for things like your resub messages, your cheers, and any other messages that you might want to have text to speech for. And it is, believe it or not, way easier than you think. So click somewhere on the screen. I'm going to leave it around here somewhere to check that out. Until next time, thanks for watching.